How exactly does a crystal form? Now, my name's Luke, and what I do is I teach people about crystals, minerals, petrology, geology, and various different natural sciences that bring all of these wonderful manifestations of matter into existence. So if you want a slightly more comprehensive understanding, by all means follow us, because we've got about 400 educational videos on this page. Now, how do crystals actually form? Now, there's not an easy answer to this question, because there's more than one answer to this question. Not only that, but there's a rich diversity to crystals in the sense that there's so many different kinds that are subdivided into various different classifications as well as compositions that give this such a diversity that there's not an easy singular answer to this question. So you might not come out the back end of this video knowing exactly how every kind of crystal forms, but because there is a galvanizing series of principles that bind at least most of them together, you should have a workable way of explaining how at least most crystals form. Now, first of all, we need to look at the ingredients. Now, the ingredients for crystals are essentially going to be elements, which are the constituent components of that thing that you might have been taught was the periodic table. Now, this consists of about 118 different elements, but only 90 of these are natural, which still gives us an enormous pool of materials in which to create a massive plethora of different kinds of minerals and crystals. Now, how do these things actually form into crystals? Now, what will essentially happen is by virtue of enormous amounts of heat that stem from molten rock deep within the Earth's crust driving water towards the surface, it's going to carry with it as some kind of host mechanism within this water various different elements. And these different elements are going to form into different systems which will form into different habits which will be different crystals. If you take calcium and fluorine, bind them together, you get calcium fluoride which is fluorite. Silicon and oxygen, bind them together, you end up with silica which we will know as quartz as long as it crystallizes. And this is indicative of various different natural processes contingent on hundreds of different variations of 90 different elements that bind together in various different ways. Now, I said crystal system, what does this mean? So let's say, for example, if you look at something like quartz, which should be a crystal that most of you are going to be vaguely familiar with. Now, this is going to be comprised of a material known as silica, which is made of silicon and oxygen. Specifically, in the context of quartz, we're talking about one part silicon, two parts oxygen, and you get silica, which makes up quartz. Now, when you get the atoms and bind them together in their sort of natural geometric shape that is known as a system. So think of a system as the natural arrangement of atoms as they appear in space. Now there's about six different kinds of system, seven if you want to be particularly anal about how you classify the hexagonal system, and you don't need to know what these are, but for a workable understanding of how crystals form, it's probably important for you to at least know that they exist. These are cubic, also known as isometric, so things like fluorite, galena, or diamond, or salt, now, or pyrite, or the tetragonal system, the orthorhombic system, the monoclinic system, the triclinic system, and the hexagonal system, which is sometimes subdivided into the trigonal system, which is what quartz conforms to. So, Think of crystal systems, which are essentially shapes. Just think of systems as shapes. Think of them as bricks, Lego bricks. Think of every different system as a unique variety of Lego brick. Now, when you layer these on top of one another in a uniform way, using only one variety of Lego bricks, you get a very, very specific shape. Now, this is essentially what a system is doing when you stack them on top of one another into what is known as a habit. Now a crystal or mineral habit is essentially the physical ca characteristics of that material or the shape of that material. So like with a uh, quartz crystal, for example, it will form into these elongated hexagonal crystals, sort of prismatic at the top, or hexagonal beryls, for example, like aquamarine or emerald. Now, how does this essentially happen? Now again, for the sake of making this easier to understand, let's look at quartz, which is obviously comprised of silicon and oxygen. How do these two materials encounter one another? So this water, which is being driven up to the, towards the surface by virtue of this enormous amount of heat deeper within the Earth's core, this is going to drive with it silicon, and it is going to drive with it 
oxygen and hydrogen, which is essentially water. Now, when you heat up water, what happens? You're going to evaporate it and it's going to break up those constituent parts into their individual constituent elements. Now, in the case of water, it's hydrogen and oxygen. Now, if you get that oxygen, once it's on its own, and bind it with silicon, which is fairly ubiquitous, it's almost everywhere within the Earth's crust, it's going to combine in order to make silica molecules. And as these bind together into their natural arrangement of atoms, it's going to create this system, which is going to materialise or layer on top of one another into a habit. Now, this happens as a result of geothermal crystallization, which in a nutshell is a glacial ballet of heating and cooling. So these will crystallize as a result of the environment heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down. And as this happens, these systems are going to layer on top of one another into what you might know as crystal terminations, which are these sort of elongated hexagonal prismatic uh, crystals or terminations. It also forms in various other ways as well, but this is very much contingent on the environment in which it forms, variables in terms of pressure and available space as well. So this is essentially what's known as geothermal crystallization, where you get this glacial ballet of heating and cooling, which causes crystals to form onto sort of a culture medium and then layer on top of each other one on top of the other in this very, very slow and glacial sort of dance where they form on top of one another and cascade out into sort of crystals. Now, if you change the ingredients, you might get a different crystal. As I said earlier, if these materials just so happen to be calcium and fluorine, you might get fluorite. If they happen to be vanadium and lead, you might get vanad vanadinite. But they're essentially all coming about as a result of a similar sort of pro process. Hydrothermal heat or geothermal crystallization causing the gradual layering of materials on top of one another by virtue of systems layering into habits. Now, this is by no means the only manner in which crystals will form. It's one of them, and it's the one which is perhaps going to be accountable for many of the materials that you might buy from a crystal seller. Things like quartz or amethyst or aventurine or citrine or smoky quartz are all going to manifest or materialize with derivations of this sequence of events. But you take something like salt, for example. This is not as contingent on something like heat or geothermal crystallization. This might come about as a result of salt or, or um, salt uh, precipitating out from a supersaturated solution. So in other words, you get salt water, which ends up having too much salt in it. So it starts to precipitate salt crystals out of that supersaturated material. Also, if you look at something like ice, this is essentially just a gas and it's not really contingent on heat, but it is contingent on temperature. As that cools down, it crystallizes into what we know as ice, which again is a variety of crystal. Now, this hopefully should give you at least a working understanding of how crystals form. There's, there's various different ways and there's thousands of different manifestations, but hopefully you should have a slightly better understanding of how that works.